Oh, you know what that is, do you? That's, I got a fully, yes, yeah, it's famous for that, hasn't it? See what I've cut it out up under here, there, so they've got room for the filter to go through. Um, as you probably can tell, the wiper mechanism here is uh, is quite close. I'm just going to switch it on now and I'll show you how close it is, but it does just miss. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's really close. But it works, which is the main thing, to switch that up. 
Um, the other thing with the cold air getting down to it, <coughs> Scatleria here is a great place for cold air. When you're moving, it becomes a source of uh, high pressure, so the air is blowing straight down. We go all the vents here. You see where I'm at? It's coming straight down. Um, originally, I had a concern about <coughs> water. What I've done now is I put plenty of uh, filter oil. So I've done a test and the water doesn't really get through the filter. So anything that does come down, then just uh, it just sort of runs off the filter. So that's that bit. The other thing as well, with, with the filter being so big, <coughs> you've got your filler from the brake reservoir. It's normally a, a hard pipe that runs straight across here, but that was just getting in the way and pressing too much on the filter so I've changed it's very difficult to see but I've used some rubber hose uh, mounted on the back and joined joined on there so I solved that problem the other thing I've done differently since the last video is the silicone hoses I uh, did try using the standard ones but <coughs> they were awful to be honest with you I just couldn't get them to seal I was having air leaks so I then invested in these silicone ones, one jubilee clip at the top and then I used two down the bottom and I also stuck some gasket sealer in as well you can see to make sure that I was sealed up to try and stop any air leaks and that's, that's working great that is now. Yeah, I want to know what to you. Sister, I want to ask you. You? Okay. Can you put my things on the floor? Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, the other thing is <coughs> if like me you're running this engine, throttle bodies and the seal in the for? standard car on top of the camera but mm. say hello. Hello. <laughs> That's mm. sweet. Yeah, so if you're um you run in a standard car you want to use all your dashboard clocks and everything, all you have to do is with the aftermarket loom, which is the the ME two two one loom, came pre-made. Is you tap in to the crank sensor. It's hard to see there, but where the standard factory wire is. Dad, who's in the camera? There's no one in the camera, but. <laughs> Why are you speaking to the camera? Because I'm silly. So yeah, this what you do is you tap in the standard wire and loom into the crank sensor, and what that gives you you. Your dashboard will work, your lights on the dash will work, your rev counter, oil pressure, oil temperature, engine temperature and the main thing as well is it kicks in your fan. So definitely advise doing that, it's not too complicated really. That was one of my concerns in the beginning, was how was I going to get everything to work like that but Dad, works fine. Daddy, what's that? So that's, what's that? that? The other thing is as well with the tune, I am running a exhaust cam vernier which you can't see and that's retarded to a negative four. But when you have yours dyno you can find the right setting for you. Um, so I think it's just fuel pump next I was going to talk about. Let's have a look. Okay so fuel pump. I did talk about this a little bit in the last, <coughs> I think it was the first video. So I've done I've wired the positive straight back to the new ECU so that's controlling it direct. I did make a bit of a mistake I left the earth running through the old control module and that caused me all sorts of fuel pressure problems so if you're doing something similar just completely get rid of that control module run your own separate earth and your lie from your ECU straight to the pump your, your fuel gauge will work um, everything will run as it wants, so just ditch that control module, you, you're just not going to need it. <laughs> okay, so I'll just show you the dash, as you can the see. Giant. All the lights are on, the one thing I have got is i got a permanent EML light on, which you'll understand, the standard ECU doesn't know what's going on. Uh, so let's try and see if it'll start. Almost. The other thing 
as well is the uh, traction control lights permanently on because again like the EC wasn't got a clue what's going on but it's all works, all runs. Take it back to the engine, have a listen. That banging noise is the uh, it's because I've got a solid flywheel so the gearbox clunks around a little bit because I'm not even running a sprung clutch when the idle's low. Idle comes up with the rattle of doors but So that's it, end of part three, thank you very much for watching.